brunch. Brunch is awesome. I mean, I'm at breakfast, but I'm at lunch. I'm at a combination breakfast and lunch. Brunch is so awesome that I think everyone should do it like every day. I literally can't think of any reason important enough to not just stop everything and relax with a full spread and forget about everything. Yellow. Huh? Well, I didn't cause that. You can't really put the blame of that on me. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, bye bye. Bye bye. <sighs> Sorry about that. So, the thing I like best about brunch is how relaxing it is. It's like all of your troubles and also your awareness of other people's troubles just stop while you're having brunch. It's just this blissful feeling of normalcy. And that's all we've ever really wanted, ever since orangutan in chief threw his toupee wrench and everything. Thank God that's over with. Just as former President Barack Obama, that would be his name, recently said in a speech to drum up votes for Team Blue, With Joe and Kamala at the helm, you won't have to think about them every single day. It won't be so exhausting. Just having a, a normal president. You'll be able to go about your lives. And don't we all deserve a little normal? You know, to when we didn't have any real worries? Isn't that what we've been fighting for this whole time? Especially as Americans, and especially, especially as white Americans, haven't we been through quite a lot lately? I mean, we came this close to a full dive into fascistic nightmare, but we came together, we did our civic duty, and we started a revolution. But now, there's nothing else to worry about. Now we can finally get back to how things were before. Back when everything was okay. The good old days. Why, one could say we made America great again. Yes? Oh, is that so? Well, what do you want me to do about it? L look, if they don't have toast, let them eat muffins or something. Look, look, you're ruining brunch, and to be honest, it's pretty selfish. God. Some people. Now, where was I? Let's see. Brunch is awesome. Did that make America great again bit? Annoying call from minorities. All right. The part where I break characters so I can drop the bit. So this is obviously a bunch of, well, malarkey. I've made a bunch of recent videos about how voting isn't enough because people are just going to go back to sleep and forget any revolutionary rage they had and, well... You won't have to think about them every single day. Almost as if they had a playbook, that's exactly what you're being told to do. Go back to your normal lives when you didn't have to think about the growing avalanche of suffering that happens around you every day. Rhetoric like this is telling you to turn your backs on the most vulnerable because they lose no matter who gets to sit on the throne. Those kids in cages, did they only exist during the Trump administration? Corporate control of government and Wall Street bailouts? That didn't happen until Orange Man cameth and will disappear once he fucketh off? Police brutality and racial profiling? We never had to worry about that before, so you personally don't see why you need to think about it anymore, right? Or the constant oppression of the LGBTQ community, ever-expanding grip of white supremacy, extrajudiciously drone-murdering civilians across the world, abusive migrant policies, not to mention the exponentially increasing exploitation of the working class by the capitalist horde goblins. Ooh, a muffin! Oh, right. Sorry. You get the point by now. Things were never okay. And they aren't going to change from that if everyone goes back to ignoring the atrocities around us. Do you really want to go back to normal? What did normal look like before? What is it that you're so eager to get back to? Working 60 plus hours a week at a job you probably hate and still have little to nothing in your bank account, all while praying that you don't get hurt or sick because your insurance sucks if you're lucky enough to even have any? 
And even if you do have insurance, missing work means you'll have to choose between food or rent this month, which is astronomically compounded if you happen to be queer, black, indigenous, disabled, homeless, or any intersection of multiple disadvantaged groups. Nothing has changed except for, for a brief moment, the volume got cranked up a little louder so that a lot of people living otherwise comfortably, or at least being given the illusion of comfort, actually started to temporarily feel a small fraction of the pain that's always been affecting those just outside of their cozy blinders. And the system was set up to do just that. The more you feel pacified by illusionary comfort, the easier it is for you to forget about everything going on around you. The system wasn't momentarily broken by some intruder. There was no malfunction. It was designed this way. It was purpose-built to allow someone like Trump to get power from the start, and he won't be the last. The only thing it needs to bring us even worse and very, very near future is for you to return to your cave and enjoy the familiarity of your chains. Back to the Obama speech, he did have one brief slip where he spoke with some proximity to reality. And the system's designed so that change happens slowly. It doesn't happen overnight. That's surprisingly, albeit accidentally, accurate. Of course, the message he was trying to broadcast to you was that everything's fine. The system's supposed to work slowly to ensure change is well considered and properly thought out, creating the best possible chance of happy life for all. And of course, that's total garbage considering, I don't know, turn on the news, take a walk into a poor part of town, or just open the window and take a look at the babble tower of human suffering that is the United States of America. How do we ever get to this point? Easy. We've never not been at this point. We've let ourselves be led into a false sense that a normal life in chains isn't all that bad. And it isn't just you. Even big time libs that were extremely vocal with their criticisms of Trump are putting their megaphones back down. Like Luke Skywalker and Mark Hamill himself, who made a series of tweets like these. Marky Mark, I love you, but you're basically saying that you're not really concerned with human suffering as long as we have Trump out of office. Which, you know, kind of makes sense, considering the Jedi were an elitist religious order more concerned with internal bureaucracy than noticing the rise of an evil Emperor Supreme under their noses until it was too late, then only temporarily bringing balance after he murdered literally billions, and then went back to sleep and let him do the exact same thing again for the next generation to deal with? Someone please make that video so I fucking don't have to! None of the things you are rallying against have disappeared, and Biden isn't going to make them go away either. Remember that only about 3% more Americans voted for him over Trump. Nearly half of the American voting population, many fully armed, were not only okay with, but actively supported strengthening a push to full-on fascism. When they don't even recognize him as losing, do you think because the donkey you backed in the race got the shiny gold star that they'll just go away? But that electoral victory that pushed him through was nothing more than incidental to their primary purpose. They're fighting for something far more important, and they're not slowing down. So what did you do besides fill in a bubble? What of that bubble you've been keeping yourself in? Sure is comfy, right? I hate to tell you, but you can't stay in that bubble and still fight for true liberation. You're gonna have to step outside. And if you think it's too risky, that to try anything other than what we have now would almost certainly end a catastrophe, I've got a question for you. When you take a look out that window, do you really consider this to be the best we can possibly muster? There's just no way to get more out of the world than, you know, this? That you just happen to have been born into out of the last 12,000 years of agricultural human society and of all societies yet to come, the best possible, most universally equitable time humans are even capable of? Sure glad I drew the lucky straw and got pooped out into the best possible moment to be alive in all human existence previous or yet to be. Looks like everything after now is just a rapid collapse into an apocalyptic hell planet with nothing more that can be done, no reason to pretend to give a shit about anyone else anymore, just break into nihilistic apathy and maybe find some perfectly symbolic way to spend the rest of my completely useless and morally vacant existence- OH LOOK BRUNCH! You know, that's... that's saying a lot about your view of humanity's capacity for kindness. Not to mention, you know, basic organizational skills. And if you don't think that, then what are you doing here? What are you sitting around waiting on? Why are you fiddling around here in the land of perpetual brunch? Go out and do stuff. Go, go do the kindness things. You think it's just going to happen all on its own?
If you right now are sitting there thinking that your vote is all that's necessary for a real change, I'm sorry, but it just doesn't cut it. You don't get to ignore rampant oppression of others and give yourself a reward for making a circle in a booth. Your job isn't finished. Voting barely even counts as part of that job. That's like saying you finished baking a cake by walking into the kitchen, taking a look around, choosing what flavor you want, and saying, well, my job's done here. I've got a challenge for every one of you watching right now. Find some form of truly impactful, immediate, and direct action and make it happen within the next week of watching this video. If you need help figuring out what that might look like, well, lucky for you, I've left a treasure trove of helpful links in the description. You can do things like providing food for those in need around your neighborhood or raising money for bail funds and mutual aid orgs, starting a community garden, working with anti-fascist groups, or something as simple as signal boosting orgs on social media. There are so many more, but you gotta get away from thinking that it has to be something difficult and should be left to someone else to take care of. Mutual aid and direct action is as simple as fixing a bunch of sandwiches and giving them around your neighborhood to those who need them. And make sure to take these opportunities to talk with the people you're helping or working alongside. Get to know the people in your community, especially those who are in the most desperate situations. Talking to them not only about how you can help them, but how you can work with them together to help everyone in your community. Show them that we take care of us. Leave a comment below about what you're planning to do to inspire others. And then come back and leave another comment telling everyone what you did take part in. Talk about actions you've done so that others will go do their own. I'm holding myself accountable to this as well. I'll be reporting what actions I've worked on even from way over here in Taiwan in a pinned comment. And on November 24th, one week from the release of this video, I'll be doing a live stream right here on this channel and I invite everyone to come talk about what actions they've been working on. So that's your challenge. Nobody's going to hold you to it but yourself and those you could have helped if you don't. You've got seven days. Seven days. It, it's not that kind of thing. We're trying to help people, but thanks. So, seven days. Of course, if you don't meet that, you won't die, most likely, but you still, you still owe it to yourself and your community to try and do everything you safely can. And even after, keep on reporting them back here and on other platforms to push others to do the same. If you've already been doing mutual aid and revolutionary action, you're amazing. If you've already done all you can or you have limitations of what you physically can do, that's understandable. Burnout and self-harm does more harm to the community than good, but I want you to seriously ask yourself, am I doing everything that I understandably can? And if you've really done all you can, then no problem. Take a break or low effort practice like signal boosting is every bit as valid. The point here is that far too many of us aren't even doing the bare minimum. And we here is humans, socialists and liberals alike. Go get active. Brunch can wait because humanity is barreling towards its own extinction and apathy will lead us directly to the grave. Oh. Thanks. Hello. No, 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 the bit's over now. No, no, you're right. Yeah, I told him about the mutual aid. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mentioned the Jedi thing too. Yeah, 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 Cantabite, I know. Anyways, I was thinking, but they're already cooked, but how can you even, all right, all right, yeah, I know, I know, none of us are at brunch until all of us are at brunch, yet they know to check my description or my Twitter for the stream, okay, love you too, whatever, I'm taking a muffin, I'm Bravery with Softway Social Club, go, do the action. Do the action. Bye. Look, look I'm bread beard. Muffins are... What do you mean muffins are bread? Which makes me think, I want to talk to you about my new idea. Muffin lines.
punch omelet okay